Hello guys, CryptoGrounds here. Welcome back to another video. Now this is going to be a little uh, different. So I th today was supposed to be the Android build video for my Idle Game tutorial series, but instead I have solved a big hallelujah issue. Um, so basically the problem was Steamworks.net uh, had some problems with the callbacks for um, making in or microtransactions or in-app purchases so i wanted to make my own mini series because this is probably gonna be like a two three three video series on how to set up steamworks properly the like the correct way and setting up your microtransaction because there's absolutely no video out there so i was like you know what i figure it out i'm gonna do it my way okay so this is episode one and today we're gonna be setting up steamworks the steamworks sdk Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new, check out my other videos, and there should be a top, there should be a corner right there in the top right corner. Comment all your feedback, questions, compliments, all that good stuff. If you want to uh, follow my Patreon, uh, it's in the links in the description below. Anyways, let's get on with it. So here I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm going to pull up where we download the, uh, where we download the SDK. Okay, so remember this is for Unity. I'm using 2019.4.4 F1 and it currently works to this to this day. Okay, so all you gotta do is search up um, here. Let's actually go to the website steamworks.net. So it's steamworks.github.io and I'll be sure to provide all of these links in the description or in the comments below. Okay, so we have uh, we have our first link right here. And we go click on the installation and go to download, zip download. So this is the zip download. Now you can go to the GitHub or zip, but I'm just going to do it from zip instead. So we download this uh, zip file right here and we have a steamworks.net master folder. Okay, so now we go into this folder also. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so now we have a standalone uh, editor and plugins okay so let's look for what's going on in here so we have some other f stuff in here that i don't think we need plugins i think yeah so this is like the stuff we're looking for here okay so this is the folder okay now i think what we do here is that we unzip this and it becomes a package okay so this is really a unity package so we do uh just open this archive unzip the file okay so uh, okay, so let's go back a step. Okay, so we have our folder here. All right, so you can uh, unzip it however you'd like. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to open up my project folder in here and I'm going to add it to my assets. So we uh, just do op show in Explorer for our assets folder and open this assets folder and we can just drag this steamworks.net master in here. Okay, now I don't like how it's not a Unity package, but it's, it's fine. It'll work. Okay, so now let it import, and that should take a minute. Okay, so now it's going to give us some instructions here. Uh, so import everything to assets, which we've done. Launch Unity project. Yep, yep. So the included editor scripts will copy Steam ap uh, at ID dot text. Okay, to the root of your project. So let's go back a step, and let's go to GitHub. Uh, Steam setup. That's my project name. And I think it's still importing, right? Is it? Okay, I think it might have. It threw it somewhere. <clears throat> so there's supposed to be a file here somewhere. I don't know where it went. So it's called Steam App ID. So let's just search it up Steam App ID text. Okay, so copy this file right here and just throw it. Actually, we can open this one too. So let's open this, uh, this window. Probably should have done that. Oh, well. Okay. So now what we do here is we replace this with your game ID. So what? So before you do all this, make sure you have your game all set up, right? And make sure you have your store set up all ready to go and you've paid for the $100 fee. So this is your game ID. Okay. So this is, this video is really for people who have already set up their game. So I would just copy my ID right here. Obviously I'm not going to build it because I feel, because that's just going to mess up my own project a lot. So you would replace this ID right here, right? Okay. So now once you save it, you can copy this text file and put it in the root of your project, which is just right here. So you can paste that in here. Actually, we might need to do show and explore. 
Okay, there we go. So now just copy that text file and paste it in your stream setup like that. Okay, so this file is going to be very important when it comes to building your project, so just be aware of what you're going to do with that. Okay, so now there's some steps that we got to uh, do first. Okay, so there's an issue where for microtransactions, when you make a callback, which um, I, I don't exactly know what they do, they're really like out of my level, but it's used to know when you when Steam lets you know that you've made a successful purchase, it kind of notifies you, right? It notifies your code that yes, you have made a successful purchase or it just has a custom error, right? So it's basically Steam's, it's basically Steam's way of letting us know if something was successful, okay? So in this problem, there's just tons of errors like to Marshall management, just stuff like this, okay? I've been working on this for over a week and I finally got it, but okay, so we have this right here. And later on, you'll see this uh, this right here, right? So I'm going to keep the link in the description below. Or here, let's add it to my link of, or my links right here. And this right here so you can get more instructions. Okay, but I'm, again, I'm going to show you how to do this properly. So once you go to uh, this page right here, which you click on right here. Sorry if I'm bouncing around. So make sure you just click on the, this would be the third link in the description. Copy all this code, okay? Go back to your scripts or your Unity. Create an empty folder, or if you already have a scripts folder, that's fine. So just, I'm just gonna create a folder since I don't have one yet. Call it scripts, okay? And we need to create a script in here. You can call this whatever you want, but I'm gonna call this Steam Callbacks IL2. CPP. Okay, so let Unity create that for us, and we're going to open it right up and paste that code. Now, if your computer is kind of crappy, this will be a little hard because this is a very long script. And yeah, so copy and paste that code into the script, and everything should be okay. Oh, yeah, one more thing we need to do is go up here to the top, and I think we need to rename something. No, that's fine. Never mind. We're good. We're good. Ignore what I was just saying. So you just paste the script and we're good to go. You can even keep this na the Steamworks namespace too. Don't know why it works, but it does. Okay, so now we're going to get a crap ton of errors. So this is completely expected, so make sure you pay attention. Now this really depends on how or what version you are. Okay, so now uh, let's ignore that for now. So you're going to get stuff like new launch query parameters t does not exist in a namespace that's because this has extra stuff that our current one doesn't have so the simple solution to this is to completely get rid of this class right here okay so you just keep scrolling down and you just delete it okay and save it and you should probably you'll probably have to do this a few more times you can see right here steam unified messages so we're gonna have to uh hold on it's still loading I don't know where Steam Unified Messages is. I think it's further down. Uh, let's just wait for Unity to refresh. This is such a massive script. It's going to take some time. I can't even like open and close these or fold and unfold these because of how like big this is. I don't know why. It won't let me do it, but I think that's just like one of the things. But yeah, this does take a really long time to do. So please be patient. Um, even like maybe prepare for which one. So Steam Unified Messages. Okay, so I know that's on line 17292, broadcast. Okay, so yeah, just start deleting stuff. Okay, so we can get rid of that. Uh, search up Steam Unified. Yep, right here. Just get rid of all the classes that where it throws an error. Okay, because in most cases you won't need them. If they don't exist in your Steamworks SDK, then you're not going to need them in your uh, your callbacks script as well. Now, I don't feel like explaining how any of this works because personally, I don't know either. So it's very complex and it took me forever to even like figure out how to solve my own issue. All right, this should be the last one. We might have to delete this get video URL result. That's my, That's a guess. No? Okay, so now we have some errors, like inconsistent accessibility. Okay, so basically this means, uh, oh, is it still importing? 
so inconsistent accessibility, parameter type, CC or C call paste, T, uh, V table, blah, 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 is less accessible than method that. So in that case, <clears throat> we basically, so now this is where the tricky part, because if you have writer, you can easily just do all enter and you can just make this class public. But for you guys, what we can do is just um, look for this class right here. Uh, right here, it's called, a, it's an internal class, right? So now we just got to make this class a public, okay? So for me, what I had to do is that native methods, a cl or an another class that was called native methods, had to be turned into a public class, because it was originally internal. Looks like we have one more. Let's see, what's this one? CC, or C call base, yeah, right here. So now we just search for this one too, look for the class um class right here so now you just make this class public save it we might it might throw us the native methods error i am not completely sure but we'll see if it does no it doesn't okay good uh could not copy steam oh uh placed is yeah, okay, so see how I had to copy and paste it manually right here? I guess that was some error going on right here, but we did we did this anyway, so it, you can ignore this error right here. So basically it's just telling us to copy this file manually, which we did, so we can just ignore it. All right, so we have our SDK set up. Now we need to set up a Steam Manager script, okay? So now let's just create uh, an empty, call it Steam Manager. And we're going to create a script. Actually, we already have a script called Steam Manager. So let's search for that. Steam Manager. Or no, I think we have to create it. Yeah, we have to create that ourselves. Never mind. Steam Manager. Okay. So create that script. Create an ad. And open it right up. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the instructions here. So now it says, notes, if you're using the GitHub version, you might want to grab the Steam Manager Mono Behavior. It is included in the Unity package. Okay, so I guess we didn't use the Unity package version, but whatever. So you click this. I'm going to put this. This will be the fourth link, and I'll be sure to label these two to help you guys out. Copy and paste all this code and paste it into your Steam Manager script. Okay, so let's see. We have an error already. Cannot resolve. Huh, that's funny. This is something related. Okay, so I see. This is a bug on them. But you see, this, this is supposed to be a uh, lowercase. Okay, so, yeah. You can even find these errors yourself, too. So if you understand what it's saying, and if you know that exists, what you did, you can change the capitalization. Uh, so we can change some of the syntax in here, too, because it's kind of messy. Like that like that okay so I basically just turn this that whole method into an expression body like that and there's a lot of grays here it says that we can just change these but we're not going to do that okay so now let's scroll down to here okay so now we have to replace our app ID here so right now it's app ID underscore T invalid so now we have to replace that with our app ID and we got to cast it as an app ID underscore T Okay, so we changed this to our app ID, which I've showed you what that was earlier, and mine's like, uh, you can just open this back up, and just copy and paste it too. Um, so yeah, just paste that number in here, make sure app ID is there, and you should be good to go. Now, what I'm going to do personally is that if you're building for like Cartridge or something like, or just a different platform other than Steam, you want to add a, a bool in here. And you can just call this like Steam Active, okay? Now this is a hard. This might be hard for people who kind of just tend to forget these small things, but you want to make sure this is checked as false. And you can do this inside Unity too, which is really nice. Um, make sure it's checked as false if you're building, for example, Cartridge or itch.io because it can cause future issues. Also, I'm gonna convert this to an expression body because that's really bothering me. <laughs> okay. Um, so now with this bool right here, we can basically just throw this in the awake method right here. And we can do if uh, steam is active, we can uh, do all this stuff in here. Okay. Otherwise, uh, I need to indent all this syntax. 
Okay. Otherwise, we are going to do game object dot destroy. Actually, no. Set active. I think it's set active false. Yeah. Set active false. Is that what I do in my script? I kind of forgot. <laughs> but yeah, you can basically just set this to false. Okay. Alrighty. So I think that's it. Hopefully you followed along. Um, okay. So now we have this. And uh, we have our thing set up. I'm going to show you how to build it. Okay. So there's a lot that that goes into this. And I have a video on building on Windows, but I'm going to go through the process here just because I feel like it's, it would be necessary. So yeah, make sure you check this for Steam if you're building a Steam. Also, another thing, if you're going to play this in your editor, make sure to uncheck this or else it will say in Steam that you're playing your game if you have it, like, you know, if you have it ready or downloaded, you know, if you know what I mean. Okay, so... Yeah, so make sure that's checked. I'm not going to add any user interface, okay? Because it's just going to be a very quick build. I don't want to add anything. I just want to get straight to the point. But now we have our Steam Manager. We need to grab a few files, okay? So if we do... I'm going to go to my GitHub. I think I have a folder on here. Okay, so I have a folder called Include for Steam, okay? So you can ignore all the Discord stuff, okay? Now, you see this right here? This is all, these are all the files you're going to need every time you build, okay? So what I like to do in your in my project file, right here, uh, I had it open. So let's go to Steam Ready or Steam Setup. I like to create a folder where it says include for include for Steam or something like that, okay? And I'm just gonna copy my app ID, alrighty. And we need to look for a few folders, okay? So I'm going to go back to my project just so I remember which ones they are. And you need Steam App API dot DLL, Steam API, uh, Steam API dot DLL. You may not be able to find it like that. You just got to look for the right one down here. Okay, so you see there's different ones here. So we're going to need lib Steam, uh, which is this one right here. We're going to need this one, and I think we need, uh, yeah, we need the 64. Okay, so that's this one right here. Okay, so basically just copy this one and this one here. Uh, you might want to go to Show and Explorer. And it's going to open up a bunch of places. So here's our, here's this one right here in our lib our libsteam api.so so copy these files into the include for steam folder and let's see what else do we need i think we're missing one more yeah oh wait oh right here yeah okay include for steam perfect okay so I can close all these other folders. So make sure you have your libsteam API. So make sure you have all these folder, these files right here, right? Okay. Now what we're gonna do is uh, we have to build this. Okay. So okay. So now what we need to do is search up Steamworks SDK or oops SDK. Yeah, right here. So now you go to the first link, which should be partner.steamgames.com. Uh, Okay, so now we're now we're on this page here. We can click on this download link right here, and we don't need any of this, honestly. So now it'll download as another zip file, and open that up. Okay, so copy this SDK folder in somewhere safe. Now I like to put it in my Steam, uh, my actual project folder, so you can just call it Steam right here. Okay, and throw the SDK right in this folder. And this should take a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're going to go to our SDK. And we have a readme folder here. So this is just basically like a, a patch notes here. So you can just kind of ignore that. And really, I don't ever go into these folders. So you, all I, I go to, or all I ever touch, is go to Tools, uh, Content Builder, 
and content. Okay, so now your game content lives here. So I'm gonna create a folder called active uh, active build. Okay, so now this is where our game builds will go. All right, so I like to keep my uh, folders in a uh, quick access here. Like, see, there's my access builds. So all I gotta do is just go to content builder and then run this build. However, there's more to that. So now we gotta right click on this run build and click edit. Okay, and in here, you will have to put in your account, your Steam account, like your Steamworks account and password in here. <coughs> okay, <coughs> excuse me. But um, basically, it calls these two scripts right here. And so we don't need to really touch anything here except for the account login. And you will do that. Okay. And on your first try, it will probably ask you for a Steam verification code. So make sure you are aware of that. And next, we're going to go to our scripts folder. Okay. So we have two files here our app build 1000 and our depot build 1001. Okay, so now in here we put our game ID, which uh, we already have. I keep closing this because I keep forgetting about it. Okay, so we throw this in here. And you can put your description here, honestly. You can do whatever you want with it. You can put like what version. You can also edit this in Steamworks too. But I, I don't really touch this because I just forget. <laughs> So now well, we want to put our depot ID. In most cases, it's just an increment of one. Okay, and you don't have to touch this ever again. But how how do you check for that? You go to uh, App Admin and click Steamworks Admin and go to Builds. Okay, so here this is my uh, depot ID. Actually, no, we gotta go to depots first. See, I have mine right here. This is the ID for this. Okay. So I set mine to all languages, Windows, and 64 bit only. Okay. Now, from what I understand, the the Steamworks, at, like the script that we just added earlier, they don't work for 32 bit. Okay. So I put mine at 64 rather than all architectures and for base app. Okay. And you could add more depots. Now, I've, I've yet to figure out how to do it for Mac. So, yeah, make sure you do this. And this is your depot ID here. And that was what goes in here. Okay, so make sure it matches. And make sure you save. Make sure you change the language. Make sure you choose your language here. Okay, so we're going to save this. And now our next script is the depot build 1001. Okay. So we get to put our depot ID in here, which is what we did earlier. Put the one. Okay, and now your content route is, um, that's basically where it's going to look for. Okay, so I'm going to go to mine. I'm going to show you what mine looks like. Okay, so you see how I have mine right here. I have uh, my file right here. So basically, you just want to copy this, um, this path, this file path to the active build folder. Okay, so you can just copy and paste that into here. Obviously, yours is going to be different. I don't, it depends on where you put yours. But mine would be, uh, let's see, Steam Setup. It would be GitHub. Steam Setup uh, backslash Steam uh, backslash SDK tools, content builder, content act builds. Alrighty. And we can close out of this one. Okay. And that is all you need to do here. Okay, so when you're done with that, and once you have build your project, which I will do that next, uh, after this, you can click this run build. Okay, and I'm not going to do that because I don't want to screw up my game. So I'm going to show you how to build it. So let's go to file, build settings. Okay, so make sure you choose uh, the 64-bit architecture. Okay, so we have, uh, close out of this. Okay, so we have switched to 64-bit architecture. So let's go to our player settings here. Uh, make sure you set up your company name. So I'm going to do Cryptograms and uh, choose your product name and your version. Make sure you increment this every time. Choose an icon. Um, you should probably know the drill by now. Have it run in the background too. That's also uh, pretty helpful. Um, resizable window. Everybody loves those. Some, I mean, some games you cannot have a resizable window, but in my case, I'm just going to keep it. Uh, Splash image. I don't mess with these settings, but that's for you to play with. Um, 
Okay, so all these settings can remain the same. So make sure you choose a bundle identifier, which look, it looks like it's already done that for us, but um, this is for Mac only, but um, so I can just ignore this pretty much. And I'm gonna choose the IL2 CPP scripting backend, okay? And make sure you change the API compatibility level, compatibility level to .NET 4.x. And we need to change the managed stripping level to high, okay? We gotta protect our code. And I, for your test builds, I tend to keep these on full just so we can see where these errors are located and it gives us a lot of detail. So that's up to you. Um, you can, yeah, you just keep them like this and then on your official game release, you can probably just turn these to script only or even none, okay? But this also affects your editor errors too, so be aware of that. Um, so XR settings, we don't, we don't need to mess with that and our settings should be good to go. So let's close out of this. Ah oh, man, you need these frozen. Okay, and we're gonna click that build button and I'm just gonna make a build folder here or something like that, builds. Now you can include this outside of your project or inside of your project, however you want. So um, in here, we're just gonna create a 0.1 test. Okay, so this is where all of our files are gonna be. So we're gonna select folder and it will build. Also, I just wanted to give a shout out to this guy in principle for helping, for him not really helping me directly, but he was pretty much the reason why I got through pretty for most of this and got all the links. So I want you to check out his channel and like his videos. And yeah, thank you in principle for your helpful videos. The best feeling is when it builds successfully for the first time. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we have our game right here. So we should have six files. We have a Steam setup data, game assembly DLL, the actual app. So if you don't put in an icon, it automatically defaults as a Unity icon. Now I really don't recommend that. We have a crash handler and Unity player. Okay, so all you need is these five because this is uh, back up this folder, but don't ship it with your game. Now I don't really know what the use is, but I believe it's something related to debugging. So I so don't touch that. So basically, copy all these folder or all these files. Go to your content builder right here. Go to your content active build and paste all your files in here. Excuse me, sorry. What the hell? <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. So now we have these, but we're missing some files. Remember what we talked about earlier with the include for Steam? Well, now is the time where you copy all of these and paste them in here. Okay. So now you have all of this all together. Okay. So now when you're now whenever you're updating, you delete th these three right here and these three and replace it with the new version. Okay. It's the same thing every time, but except you just delete that and delete these two, okay? Now, we wanna keep these forever, okay? We don't wanna get rid of them or else our game won't load properly. And now is the time where you can go to Content Builder and click that Run Build button, okay? So I'm not gonna do it, but I'm gonna show you where it goes. So basically you go back to here, you go to Steamworks, App Admin, and go to Steam Pipe and go to Builds. Okay, so you see this is where the description was, right? So you would have, I think you'd have to set up a branch. I don't know what it looks like at first, but you would have to set up this default branch right here, something like that. And you only need one branch, honestly. And what you do is that this would be, it would look just without these two, right? It would just have one empty version right here with your depot ID and your build ID and the date it was, it was uh, created. And you would select the most recent one you put, so that would be at the top, and select the default branch, okay? And you click Preview Change, and uh, so I can't do it, obviously, but I'll show you what the screen looks like. So you go to Preview Change, and you click that Set Build Live. Now, you can also add some additional comments if you'd like. I'm not going to do that. Once that is done, you go to the Publish section, and this is where you are sure you want to update this to your public to the public, right? So you click for prepare for publishing, publish to Steam. You can also view, do view diffs. You could see some like uh, you could see some other changes in here. Type in the magical keyword Steam works and hit that really publish button, and it will publish to Steam. Okay. Anyways, that was all I believe. Next video will be the actual microtransactions, and I'm not going to show you the example in the video. I'm going to show you how to implement the system and the downfalls of doing this, and 
also what's nice about it is that it doesn't require you making a purchasing server, which I have no experience with. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you're new and check out my other videos in the top right corner. Comment all your feedback, questions, and uh, compliments all in the comments below. And if, I'll, don't forget to check out the links if you need some help. I will be sure to provide these in the comments too. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.